Oh god, my lens went behind my eye. Okay. Whew. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I am reviewing for you the Lush Slapstick Foundation. If this is your first time to my channel, welcome. Don't forget to subscribe for tutorials, reviews, educational makeup videos, everything like that. And check me out on Instagram. I have a load of makeup pictures there for you guys. So I saw a review of this Lush Foundation. I've never used Lush makeup before because I've kind of looked at it and always thought, it's not going to be that good. <laughs> but when I saw this foundation, I thought, let me give it a go. Let me see what it's like. Let's see what happens. So the foundation itself comes in 40 different shades. That is a big, big range of colour for foundation. It comes in neutral tones, warm tones, and cool tones as well. So you have every kind of undertone. So Lush also claimed that it's breathable foundation with a buildable coverage. So we'll see about that buildable. As you guys can see, I've had this big breakout on my skin all around here, all around here. I don't know what's going on. My face hurts. My whole face is sore. <laughs> One thing that does worry me about this foundation, I have very oily skin, I have massive pores, I have, you know, oil gushing out of my face, and this foundation, let me just, let me check what it says. So, 14% pigment, 45% Indonesian coconut oil. That is a lot of oil for my already oily face. But I don't know how that's gonna apply. What's, I don't know, I don't know, I'm scared. So they also claim on a website that a little bit goes a long way and they do recommend using it with a brush, beauty blender or fingers, you know. So this is mine. I have touched it a little bit at the front there. I chose the shade 12W, so 12 warm. I went onto the website and did a live chat with someone and it's imp almost impossible to match your foundation over the internet online without physically being there in front of someone, so I don't blame them for this slight colour difference. Um, I told them that my skin was NC30 and MAC, because I think MAC shades are quite a universal understanding, you know. And they said, yeah, this one would be a really good match for me, um, the 12W. So we'll try this, see how it goes. I haven't got anything on my skin, all I have is moisturiser. I don't want to use a primer because I don't want to um, change the effects of the foundation. So I really want to try this out and see how it goes. Ah. So the foundation itself is dipped in beeswax. So there is foundation under here, but you can kind of peel it off as you get closer to the bottom. Um, if this just makes like an easier handle, considering that this is pretty much just oil. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one side beauty blender, one side um, um, brush. <laughs> so let's just see how that applies. So I guess So it's quite, um, it applies quite well. First of all, let's use a beauty blender this side. Beauty blender, excuse me. So the colour is, is a bit light for me. A bit, a lot. <laughs> but that's fine, we'll just look at the texture and see how that sits. So as I'm blending it out, it seems to be getting quite transparent and quite see-through. You can still see the redness under my skin right here. My skin, guys, what's going on? I really want to see how this kind of sits in pores as well, because if it sits in my pores, then we know it's not a very nice foundation for me. Oh, no, it blends over quite nicely. So it's not just sitting in my skin, it's actually, um, I don't know what I'm gonna say, but it's not sitting in my pores, which is a good thing. I'm really not very keen on the coverage, to be honest with you guys. It, it's not really covering very well. Um, I know the colour's slightly off, but... And you know what, I do actually go usually a little bit lighter with my foundation because it oxidises on my skin, so it gets darker with about 10 minutes of it being on my skin. Let's try the other side, that's just one layer. Let's try applying it onto my skin and then blending it in with a brush. So I'm using my foundation brush. It's kind of a mix between a powder brush and a natural foundation brush. So the shade is definitely not the right colour for me. That is fine. We'll see we'll see if it like um oxidizes. One thing I have noticed is you really have to apply it where you want the coverage. You can't like put a bit here and then blend it out because it doesn't blend that well, it doesn't travel so well. It doesn't spread, I should say. The colour isn't very movable. Oh no. Oh god, look. Look at it sit in my pores there. Eel. That side isn't so bad. So that is one layer, that's kind of a base layer. You can see there's still pinkness on my nose here, my cheeks are still red. 
Let's go in with a little bit more. It claims to be buildable, so let's give it a chance. I'm just gonna use my Beauty Blender. It seems to work a little bit better with a blender rather than a brush. So if we ignore the fact that it's actually about three shades too light for me, <laughs> um, the, the coverage is okay. It's not a full coverage. It's definitely not a buildable foundation, first of all. It does cover here, but the more I build, the oilier it's going to get. So maybe I should say it's not buildable if you have oily skin. This foundation is not for people with oily skin. 100%. It sits on my pores. It gets oilier and oilier the more it sits on my skin, and I can't build it up anymore. If you have dry skin, however, say you have eczema, psoriasis, things like that, this might be a really nice foundation considering it has those oils in there. Um, it'll be really nice for you as well. I mean, I've just sat, it's been like, what, five seconds and I'm, I'm getting even more oilier. It's not a bad foundation. It's absolutely not a bad foundation. If you're used to BB creams, CC creams, things like that, then you can absolutely go ahead and use this one. If you're used to something like MAC Studio Fix or Double Wear or something like that, you're an oilier person, I wouldn't go for, I wouldn't go for this at all. Maybe I would use it if I was going out quick and I was like, oh crap, let me get my lush thing and put a bit. It's already kind of setting, let me do this in like the fine lines, things like that. And actually, as I touch it, it does t come off on my fingers quite a bit. I don't know if you can see that. I mean, it's not it's not terrible, guys. It's not terrible. I just, I just wouldn't buy it. In terms of application, it's very, very messy. I mean, you can, you can hold this, but I mean, your fingers tend to slip up. I like the way they've shaped it, because then you can kind of get in all the different areas, things like that. They've almost shaped it like a beauty blender, I guess, so you can, you can kind of, um, apply it evenly, but it's a very messy foundation. I'm happy they've put this paper in there. Ooh. I keep nearly dropping it, otherwise it would have just been melted in this box. So my overall conclusion, I guess, is if you have oily skin, it's not so good. If you have dry skin, it's a nice foundation. It smells nice, it sits on the skin, okay-ish. If you have fine lines, large pores, it's definitely not your friend. But, um, yeah. I mean, I love Lush products. I love their um, bath bombs, shampoos, conditioners, face washes, everything like that. Makeup, they might have a little bit more work, but I know it's not easy to make a vegan product that works to the standards that we're used to now in terms of makeup. Um, so they've done well in that perspective. I hope I helped you guys figure out whether you want to go ahead and buy that foundation or not. If you've tried any of Lush's makeup, Lush's? Lush's? If you've tried any of their makeup, let me know what you've used below and if you liked it, and maybe I'll try out a few things. I kind of trust your guys' opinions, so do let me know. Don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up if you have enjoyed it and I'll see you very soon. Bye.